Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. So this is part two of my lecture, which I delivered in the morning. And this lecture is specifically planned for the FCPS residents who are appearing in the dermatology exit examination. In the first part of the lecture, I, um, I gave you a plan how to look uh, at the histopathology slide, whether you are uh, diagnosing in on under a microscope or in front of your computer screen. So the format is to look from top to bottom. We discussed in uh, part one, what are the salient inflammatory and non-inflammatory uh, features in different layers of epidermis. And in this lecture, that is the part two of the same topic, we are going to discuss what are the features we are going to look for in the papillary dermis, reticular dermis, and in the subcutaneous fat. So first is the papillary dermis. In the papillary dermis, we will see the lacanoid inflammatory infiltrate we will look for the pigmentary incontinence, as mentioned before. We will look for subepidermal split and different inflammatory cells which are present in the subepidermal uh, blister. So this picture is a magnified image of um, dermal papillary neutrophilic microabscesses or papillary tip microabscesses. You can see one of the dermal papilla and the dense neutrophilic infiltrate with a split. This is a typical feature of dermatitis herpetiformis, that is papillary tip uh, neutrophilic microabscesses. Then here we, uh, uh, are, is, we are again witnessing subepidermal blister. This is the whole epidermis seen on the floor of the blister, while the uh, roof of the blister, while the floor of the blister is formed by the dermis, and the predominant inflammatory infiltrate within the blister is are the eosinophils. So if you see such an appearance in the exam, the first diagnosis you will give will be uh, bullous pemphigoid. Other conditions which are associated with subepidermal blister and eosinophil is herpes gestationis and the um, inflammatory form of uh, epidermal lysis bullosa acquisita. In this uh, uh, image, you see another subepidermal split and dense inflammatory infiltrate, but this time the inflammatory infiltrate is mainly neutrophil. So a subepidermal blister with predominant neutrophil is primarily linear IgA disease. But, but in addition to linear IgA disease, the other differentials will be bullous SLE and Again, the inflammatory phase of epidermolysis bullosa acquisita. So if you see, an, again, a subepidermal blister, but this time the blister cavity does not contain any infiltrate. So this is called as the cell-poor blister. And there are a few differential diagnoses, diagnoses of the cell-poor blister, which include epidermolysis bullosa acquisita or epidermolysis, epidermolysis bullosa dystrophica, then we see this in porphyria cutanea tarda. We see this in amyloidosis, in diabetic bulla, in uh, cryotherapy, traumatic blister, suction blister. So there are different kind of uh, conditions which are associated with self poor blister. So um, one of the um, uh, one of the um, uh, way to diagnose uh, the bl subepidermal blister due to um, uh, porphyria cutanea tarda is to order uh, PS stain. PS stain tend to uh, highlight the, uh, the, the a hyalinized deposit which is seen around the blood vessels in the upper derms. So this is a subepidermal bulla due to porphyria cutanea tarda. In pap uh, the papillary dermis, we are also going to see the solar elastos elastosis or elastolytic changes in the dermis. Then we will also uh, see the grand zone and uh, uh, we will try to find if the papillary dermis is invaded by nests of keratinocytes or melanocytes. 
So this is a uh, grade three changes of uh, actinic elastosis or solar elastosis. Um, finding such kind of uh, appearances in histopathology show a chronic sun damaged skin. Usually it is a common findings in a skin biopsy taken from individuals who are of old age and fair complexion. Grand zone. Grand zone is described as zone of normal dermis between the normal epidermis and abnormal dermis. I repeat again, grand zone is described as a zone of normal dermis between the overlying normal epidermis and abnormal dermis. There are two dermatological conditions which are associated with histopathological grand zone. The first of which is granuloma facial, which is uh, uh, not a granuloma and is characterized by diffuse mixed inflammatory infiltrate comprising of eosinophils, uh, lymphocytes, plasma cells, and neutrophils uh, within the dermis. Then the grand zone is also seen in lepromatous leprosy, where there are diffuse sheets of uh, foamy macrophages within the dermis. This uh, image is a typical image of uh, superficial spreading basal cell carcinoma, where you can see the basaloid nests uh, of cells, and these nests display um, peripheral palisading and retraction artifacts. The retraction artifact is a typical feature uh, seen in uh, basal cell carcinoma. This is because of the fact that cells in the basal cell carcinoma, they do, do, they do not have desmosomal connections. As a result of which, these cells, they jumble up on each other, leaving a space uh, between the cells and the stroma. And this space is called as the retraction artifact. Another feature of basal cell carcinoma is retention of their connection with the overlying epidermis. So here you can see this uh, retaining connection with the epidermis at several places. Then uh, within the papillodermis and the dermis, we can see the, the keratinocytes, atypical keratinocytes with uh, uh, keratin pearl formation. And this is well differentiated squamous cell carcinoma. If there is a patient of uh, melanoma, uh, the first of all, the there will be a horizontal spread, and then later on there will be a vertical spread or downward spread of melanoma within the term. So in this image, you can see the nest of atypical melanocytes at the epidermis, as well as the nest of variable size are seen invading the dermis. So this uh, atypicality in structure and cellular uh, detail is a feature of melanoma. So this is a superficial spreading malignant melanoma. Uh, in reticular dermis, we are also going to have a general look on the collagen, the blood vessels, hair follicles, sweat glands, and nerve twigs, because all the adenexal structures and connective tissue structures are part of the dermis. If the collagen is edematous, uh, that is water or mucin, it can be thick or keloidal. Uh, there can be localized thickening of the collagen in a form of dermatofibroma or uh, some or presence of adenexal structures. Inflammatory infiltrate may be seen in the reticular dermis, and you have to differentiate between the inflammatory and neoplastic diseases. In the image shown above, there are two kinds of stain. On the left, this is HNE stain. HNE stain, uh, these um, uh, violaceous or uh, pink, dark pink color um, fibers are seen in the mid dermis, while on the right side, this is Elshin blue stain. Elshin blue stain stains these uh, fibers uh, blue. So this uh, stain uh, confirms that uh, this is uh, mucinosis. And there can be many different causes of mucinosis, but here we are seeing generalized lichen mix edema. Here in this image, you can see a normal epidermis, a normal papillodermis, while in the dermis, uh, there are multiple fragmented uh, fibers seen almost occupying the whole reticular dermis. These fragmented fibers are not collagen. These are actually the elastin tissue. 
and you have to ask for elastin von Kiesen stain for this. And this is pseudoxanthoma elasticum. And von, elastic von Giesen would stain these uh, fibers black. This image I shown you before, and it shows um, thinning and flattening of epidermis. And uh, the whole dermis is thick and show, showing hyalinized collagen bundles. And this is typical of keloid. Here you can see uh, a few distinguishing features. Uh, the epidermis appears hyperplastic. Then there is um, uh, a, a, a zone of structureless collagen. You can see, call it as a grand zone, but it is not in true sense, not a grand zone, but it is a structureless collagen. And uh, beneath this, there is a dense connective tissue growth occupying the whole uh, of the dermis. And this is actually dermatofibroma. So dermatofibroma is characterized by dense uh, collagenous and histocytic uh, growth in the dermis and overlying epidermis shows hyperplasia. In contrast, there is another collagen tumor, which is dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans. In dermatofibrosarcoma protuberans, uh, the uh, overlying epidermis is thinned out and uh, the connective tissue tumor it starts from the papillary dermis and it involves the whole dermis and even it is infiltrating into the subcutaneous fat. And on higher magnification, you can appreciate the storyform pattern. The storyform pattern is the distribution of uh, fascicles of collagen in different directions. Another important feature or uh, structure which we are going to look in the dermis is the presence of granulomas. Uh, while uh, differentiating, while picking up the granuloma, the best magnification is the scanner or four magnification. In this magnification, the granulomas appear as eosinophilic structureless bodies, which are surrounded by uh, basophilic cells. Once you, um, once you suspect that this is a case of uh, granulomatous in inflammation, then you will go to higher magnification to see uh, the, uh, the individual cells and, um, uh, and you will uh, try to find the LT bodies or the, um, uh, or, the uh, or, or fungal uh, spores or hyphae or typical fungal structures. If granulomas are seen, then you also have to exclude the caseation necrosis, necrobiases, nerve fibers within the granulomas, and foreign bodies, and fungal hyphae. And if the giant cells are present, you will try to differentiate if the giant cells are of Teuton type, or foreign body type, or Langen type. This typical um, slide is uh, shows several well-formed granulomas, but these granulomas are not surrounded by significant inflammatory infiltrate, and the granulomas are quite discrete from one another. And if the giant cells are present, the giant cells are usually uh, foreign body type. So these kind of well-defined um, granulomas with little inflammatory infiltrate is typical feature of sarcoidosis or foreign body granuloma. Then this appearance is that of uh, tuberculoid granulomas in which there are uh, diffuse uh, granulomas which are merging into each other and are surrounded by dense inflammatory infiltrate and the giant cells predominantly are the Langen type of giant cells. These kind of granulomas are seen in cutaneous tuberculosis in cutaneous leishmaniasis, and uh, in uh, defungal infections as well. So, um, if you see granulomas along with caseation necrosis in an exam slide, you will definitely um, uh, label that slide as uh, cutaneous tuberculosis because caseation necrosis is the most typical feature of uh, cutaneous tuberculosis, although caseation may be seen in other granulomatous conditions like um, uh, cutaneous leishmaniasis. This is a third kind of granuloma, which is called as the 
suppurative granuloma. In this granuloma, there, there is a, a neutrophilic abscess, and surrounding this neutrophilic abscess, there are granulomas. And usually, the, uh, these, uh, the microorganisms are found within this neutrophilic abscess. There are two kinds of conditions in which uh, we find the separative granulomas. First are the atypical mycobacterium, and second is the D fungal infections. So if we find separative granuloma or neutrophilic abscesses with granulomas, then you are definitely going to look for the fungal colonies or hyphae. So one of those fungal colonies are these uh, copper pennies, which are seen in chromoblastomycosis. And this is HNE stain. So these copper pennies are visible even on HNE stain. And the big hyphae of uh, few hyphomycosis is also visible on HNE stain. This is the fourth kind of granuloma which we see in uh, uh, dermatopathology. And these granulomas are the necrobiotic granuloma. And these is not a true caseation, but rather altered collagen. And uh, surrounding this area of altered collagen, there are ir ill-formed or irregular granulomas. The granulomas surrounding the necrobiasis are never well-formed. And uh, many of the cases, the granulomas are open and they are associated with epithelioid cells as well as uh, giant cells. And epithelioid cells are arranged uh, in a, in a fence-like uh, pattern surrounding these areas of necrobiasis. That is why these granulomas are also called as the palisading granulomas. Inflammatory infiltrate can be seen in absence of granuloma. And then you have to see if this inflammatory infiltrate is perivascular or perinexal or in the interstitium. It is also must to find the cell type and eosinophils are present, neutrophils are present, mast cells or plasma cells. If infiltrate is seen primarily around the blood vessel, you must exclude whether this is a case of vasculitis by finding the, uh, find, by finding the fibrinoid necrosis in the vessel wall. Along with that, RBC extravasation and leukocytoclasia, which is the uh, breakdown product, product of neutrophils. This image shows um, sleeve-like uh, perivascular lymphohistocytic infiltrate. So this kind of appearance in absence of any other finding that is epidermis appears normal, there is no basal cell vascular degeneration, there is no granulomas, there is no other cells. So in the, these, the, the only finding here is superficial and deep perivascular lymphocytic infiltrate. So the differential diagnosis of this condition will be uh, insect bite, but the insect bite reaction is usually associated with eosinophils. And the other differentials include justness, lymphocytic infiltrate, polymorphic light eruption, uh, perniosis, and a large number of annular erythemas or thema in an air. Here you can see this uh, dense neutrophilic infiltrate surrounding the blood vessels. And on higher power, the blood vessel wall is ill-defined, eosinophilic, and this is called as the fibrinoid necrosis. And neutrophils um, are seen along with the leukocytoclasia. Leukocytoclasia are the individual lobules of the neutrophils look like dots uh, uh, surrounding the blood vessels and shows that the neutrophils are undergoing karyorexis. And this uh, image shows a little bit of... Um, uh, necrosis in, around the blood vessels and calcification. Along with that, there are a few eosinophils. Other kind of inf infiltrate is also seen like plasma cells, mast cells, lymphocytes. So they, if the predominant cells surrounding the blood vessels are the plasma cells, and blood vessels also show obstruction, then this is a typical appearance of secondary syphilis. And here you can see there are diffuse sheets of uniform cells and typical features of these cell is a fried egg appearance that is a central basophilic nucleus and surrounded by a dense cytoplasm. And this is the, these are the mast cells and this picture is that of urticaria pigmentosa. Uh, these two images show granulomas. These are the granulomas surrounding the hair follicles. So if the granulomas are seen around the hair follicles, the differential diagnosis are granulomatous rosacea. 
और लाइकन स्क्लोफ्रोसोरम और द थर्ड डायग्नोसिस इज मजोकीज ग्रैंडोमा इन मजोकी ग्रैंडोमास द ग्रैंडोमास आर सीन सराउंडिंग द हेयर फॉलिकल्स एंड विद इन द हेयर फॉलिकल्स द फंगल स्पोर्स आर विजिबल व्हिच आर हाइलाइटेड बाय पी एस टेन दिस इमेज शोज मैक्रोफेजेस विद वैक्यूलेटेड साइटोप्लाज्म सो फोमी और वैक्यूलेटेड मैक्रोफेजेस इन डिफ्यूज शीट्स देर आर ओनली टू डिफरेंशियल डायग्नोसिस आइदर इट्स जेंथोमास और इट्स लेप्रोमेटस लेप्रोसी Uh, if you find uh, the giant cells teuton giant cells along with these foamy histocytes then the diagnosis of xanthomas become more prominent and if you see granulomas along with foamy histocytes then the diagnosis of lepromatous leprosy become more prominent more easy uh, the reticular dermis may be associated with non inflammatory infiltrate uh, there are many um adenexal tumors connective tissue tumors uh, which are a part of reticular dermis you have to determine if the cells occupying the dermis uh, are the keratinocyte they are basaloid cells or they are mini squames like uh, poroma and uh, look for the cell morphology whether it's benign the cells are uh, normal architecture abnormal architecture uh, look for the retraction artifacts keratin pearls and um, Uh, are the cells uh, surround uh, uh, glandular structures or hair follicles so this these are the adenexal tumors so this uh, these are the actually uh, the keratinocytes which are occupying the whole dermis and why we are calling it as keratinocytes because uh, the cells are eosinophilic and if you go on higher magnification we will be able to appreciate the desmosomal connections between the cells so whenever you are trying to find the histogenesis of a type of cells you are going to go to the best area or the most a atyp most typical portion of the slide to find the histogenesis and this is uh, actually uh, the squamous cell carcinoma and uh, the presence of keratin pearls shows that it is either a well differentiated or moderately differentiated tumor now this is again uh, squamous cell carcinoma and we can appreciate the keratinocyte we can appreciate the desmosomal junctions and we can also appreciate that the keratinocytes have many abnormal shaped nuclei and sizes and shapes and this is a typically a poorly differentiated squamous cell carcinoma now here the basaloid cells are infiltrating or occupying the whole dermis here in the image on the left side the basaloid cells are present in many small um, uh, nodules so this is uh, the micro invasive uh, or micro nodular basal cell carcinoma and on the right side there are bigger nodules and this is uh, nodular bcc here again you can see uh, lots of basaloid cells and uh, in addition to the basaloid cells there are a lot of keratin pearl formation and there is no connection with overlying epidermis and uh, there is uh, no retraction artifact so presence of basaloid basaloid cells with keratin pearls formation with no epidermal connection and no uh, uh, retraction artifact is a feature of trichoepithelioma this is again trichoepithelioma where the basaloid cells keratin pearls and dense connective tissue network is seen and this is called as the desmoplastic trichoepithelioma this appearance is that of a large follicle and multiple small hair follicles with sebaceous glands are opening into this uh, large follicle this is a typical feature of uh, trico folliculoma this is another uh, very typical histopathological appearance you can see the two type of cells here the center is the eosinophilic area and surrounded by a basophil basophilic uh, area which is the actually the cellular part of the um, tumor and the pink is the ghost cells where the nuclei are lost so this is pilometricoma as the pilometricoma gets older the basophilic or cellular part becomes thinner and thinner and uh, the ghost cells become larger and we would find calcification within these ghost cells 
these uh, uh, cells which are seen in the image are uh, just like squamous cells, but these are smaller and cuboidal and they are called as the mini squames. And these are actually the poroma cells, which are um, derived from the eccrine sweat gland. And these are present from the epidermis and going down deep into the dermis. Again, a very typical histopathological appearance. And this appearance is that of uh, ducts and um, a thin epithelial lining of the duct and many of the epithelial lining give a tadpole appearance. And this is a feature of syringoma. Uh, again, a typical uh, adenexal sweat gland origin tumor comprising of two type of cells, a relatively darkly stained cells which are seen in uh, uh, at the uh, at the uh, border or outer border, while the little uh, less basophilic cells are occupying the rest of the nodules, and these nodules appear to be um, to be fixing uh, into each other in a jigsaw uh, in a jigsaw puzzle formation, and this is typical of cylindro. Again, um, uh, an adenexal uh, tumor, sweat gland origin tumor, which is asked in exam, uh, present in a form of nodules, well formed with a capsule, and the cells are basophilic with ducts and blood vessels. This is a carine spiridium. It is one of the painful tumors as well. In the reticular dermis, we are also trying to find if the nests of uh, melanocytes, if present, are in connection with the melanocytes and the epidermis and the dermoepidermal junction or the nests are typically seen only in the dermis. Uh, the macrophages are elongated and ribbon-like. Then uh, uh, here you can see the this image is a good typical image. Epidermis is absolutely normal. There is no junctional activity. There is a grand zone, and then there are nests of uh, um, benign-looking melanocytes that superficial nests show pigmentation, while if you go deep, these nests uh, take up the shape of fibroblast, which is called as neurotonization or maturation. This is a feature of benign melanocytic lesion. So this is a benign interdermal melanocytic nevus. This is a typically spitzoid or spitz nevus in which a wedge-shaped configuration of melanocytes is seen uh, occupying the dermoepidermal junction and going into the dermis. Another very typical, another very typical uh, tumor, and you can see very darkly staining ribbon-like melanocytes present within the dermis and this is actually the blue nevus or cellular blue nevus, uh, typical blue nevus. It's very difficult to uh, label this uh, tumor uh, but if there is any clue that is in the form of immunostain you can uh, you can differentiate it from the other uh, type of tumor. This is actually a nodular melanoma and nodular melanoma usually arises uh, from somewhere else and in the skin it comes uh, in a form of a metastasis. This is uh, this appearance is of story form appearance in which multiple fascicles of um, uh, fibroblast are seen running in various directions. This story form appearance is typical of dermatofibrosarcoma protuberance. It is also seen in neurilimomas but you rarely find a slide of neurilimoma in your exam. This is again a connected tissue tumor and the cells typically have blunt edges. They are not tapering like spindle cells. So these cells with blunt edges are smooth muscle cells and this is a leomyoma. And again a connected tissue tumor. Here the nuclei are uh, spindly as well as they have they are of irregular shape and many places they appear as comma shape and they are rather loosely placed in the stroma. Uh, so this is a neurofibroma. This is a very atypical case slide. Uh, lots of connective tissue cells, atypical cells, mitosis. This is atypical fibrosanthoma. Uh, the tumor is not as uh, malignant clinically as it looks histologically.
So we are also going to find uh, the vascular channels uh, within the reticular dermis and uh, cyst formation and even um, the deposition of uh, um, uh, the calcium deposition. So there are two kind of um, uh, vascular tumors seen in the, this image. On the left side, there are multiple nests of small um, capillaries or small blood vessels. And this is uh, the um, pyogenic granuloma. And on the right side, you see um, several large vascular channels lined by a, thing, a single layer, layer of endothelium and are filled with serous exudate. So these are the, this is the images of hemangioma. Again, a typical image, you can see multiple blood vessels. Uh, blood vessels are highlighted by the presence of RBCs. Surrounded by, surrounding the blood vessels, there are single or double layer of um, cuboidal cells. And these, uh, some, at places, the cells are of uh, multiple layers. And these cuboidal cells are the glomus cells, and this is the glomus tube. Now, there are, these are two types of cysts. The most typical and most common are the epidermal inclusion cyst, uh, which is characterized by lamellated keratin within the cyst, then a granular layer and rest of the normal epidermis. Um, and on the left side, this is a typical sebaceous cyst uh, or steatocystoma multiplex. This cyst is not a solid one. This is a soft cyst and uh, there are multiple uh, sebaceous glands are seen on in the wall of these cysts, and that's why they are called as the sebaceous cyst. This is a clinical picture of a cystic lesion on the forehead, and if we see a cross section, the uh, the uh, the cyst is comprising of um, um, uh, pilar keratinization or homogeneous keratinization, uh, and lacks the granular layer. There is no granular layer here. And this is a typical of pilar cyst. Here you can see collagen as well as bluish irregular deposition within the collagen. And these are actually the calcium deposit and it is calcinosis cutis. Now, uh, subcutaneous fat. Usually the skin biopsy, which is done in a department, does not contain subcutaneous fat. So subcutaneous fat is always included when there is a doubt of uh, paniculitis. So presence of subcutaneous fat in a slide uh, in your exam shows that there is a pathology within the subcutaneous fat. So um, pathologies in subcutaneous fat can be of two types. Either there will be an inflammation in the septa surrounding the lobules of subcutaneous fat, the septal inflammation is typically seen in erythema nodosum. So the lobules are uh, clean and only the inflammatory infiltrate is seen within the septa. So this is typical of erythema nodosum. And the other um, finding is uh, the infiltrate seen primarily within the lobules. So this is the lobular inflammatory infiltrate and this inflammatory infiltrate is seen in all the other kinds of uh, paniculitis except erythema nodosum. So in erythema nodosum, the infiltrate may also uh, enter into the lobules and there can also be granuloma formation. So this brings to end of uh, my talk. I hope that uh, uh, these two lectures will be of benefit to you while you are reviewing your slides in the examination. Uh, and uh, from my side, I wish you best of luck in your exam. Thank you and have a good day and good night.